my name is Carolina Schinke. Um, I'm an associate professor at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences and I um, mainly treat multiple myeloma patients, so that's really my area of expertise. Um, this year here at ASH, uh, we're going to have some really interesting data um, on bispecific antibody treatment. Um, you might all know that um, there were two antibodies, two bispecific antibodies that were recently um, approved by the FDA to clistamab. Um, it's one of those uh, that targets BCMA and then now the talketamab recently approved targeting GPRC5D. Um, now we know that these uh, bispecific antibody treatments are very effective in relapsed um, and refractory multiple myeloma. We had really exciting data on those over the last one, two years. 70% uh, response rates, uh, long duration of response. Um, and um, so now that it's going into, into real world, um, we, we kind of wanted to look at, well, does that differ from clinical trials? So we often know that clinical trial patients are a little bit you know, um, sometimes a little bit different from the real world. They tend to be pre-selected. You know, these are fit patients that have to have certain requirements to go into clinical trials. Now, if we can give it to everybody, how does that hold up? Um, so we looked at Teclistanab, which was um, approved um, in late 2022, um, so almost a year now ago. Um, we've had um, now a lot of patients taking this drug. And in collaboration with other sites, uh, Medical College of Wisconsin, Columbia University, um, MSK, Montefiore. So we had a couple of sites um, with which we collaborated. We looked at response rates and um, also at infections because that was really one main issue, one side effect of this teclistamab uh, causing um, sometimes even severe infections leading to death. Um, overall response rate uh, I think is still great for this really heavily prelapsed, uh, sorry, relapsed, uh, pre-treated patient population. Um, it's up to 60%, almost 70, like in the clinical trials. Um, we don't have a whole lot of follow-up yet, so we don't know exactly how long that response will last in these patients. Uh, we hope to have that soon. Um, infectious rate was actually um, a little bit better than what it was reported in these clinical trials, and that was because we now actively and proactively use infection prevention. So a lot of patients get IVIG, a lot of patients are, pre are treated with Bactrim, Dapso, and all these antibiotics that tend to, pre uh, tend to, to um, prevent infections. And that was not necessarily always done on clinical trials, because at that time they didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, so now knowing that patients run into infections, these prophylactic treatments really have helped to, um, to um, prevent infections down the line. Um, so we show in our abstract that the administration of IVIG really can uh, reduce, significantly reduce severe infections and also reduces all infections. Um, so in, in that sense, uh, we can make the administration of teclistamab um, much safer um, with, with using these prophylactic measures. Um, so I think that is a really um, important, clinically important takeaway that uh, teclistamab um, is effective in the real world and can be very or can be better tolerated if using prophylactic um, measures. Um, as to the telcatamab, the GPRC5D um, antibody, so uh, we don't have any real world data on that yet, um, but we are presenting follow ups from the clinical trials um, where we also just kind of confirm the efficacy. We had 70% overall response rate on the TALNI1 um, TAL trials. Um, quite um, also long duration of response. Um, I believe it's now for those that actually respond to telcatamab, the disease does not tend to relapse for at least 12 months or even longer, so that's great. Um, even patients who had prior exposure to BCMA targeting um, treatment like CAR-T or bispecifics, uh, they tend to have still a good response rate, uh, 50 to 60 percent. Um, again, I think that's great news. Um, with talcatamab, um, the side effects mainly are this, the loss of taste, uh, which is, can be quite bothersome to the patient. Worst case scenarios, even weight loss, um, significant weight loss. Um, so these are side effects that I think we're trying to, um, to improve over the course of time. Um, I think with maybe, you know, in the real world, what we do is maybe try a little bit alternate dosing. Uh, right now it's every two weeks, maybe once the patient achieves 
complete response. We try to go to monthly treatment. Um, we've tried a, a lot of potential medicines that could improve taste. Um, I mean, we've tried anti, um, or, or you know, these medicines that we use for neuropathy, like Lyrica, Gabapentin. Uh, we have not seen a lot of success, I can say, but that's just my subjective um, opinion. Um, we've tried vitamin B, 12 supplements, zinc. I think that's also not, not gonna be a magic bullet. Um, so I think trying to uh, mitigate this side effect of taste, uh, not being able to, to uh, taste well is, is still an issue, um, but on the myeloma, it definitely works very well. Um, so we're very, um, really excited to have these uh, bispecific treatments now available to the whole population. Um, I think as the field expands, it will be, um, very exciting in the multiple myeloma field and um, now there are trials combining teclostam and talcatamab using them in combination especially for patients with very aggressive disease um, so i think the future looks bright and uh, well we're excited um, to see what's going to be here next year at, at the ash 2024 meeting thank you very much